Junction Magazine loves sharing stories about people and their passions, local places and experiences. It feels like a natural progression and one that we have been working on for some time to bring you a series of short films highlighting some of the stories that make where we live so, so special and of course supporting our local communities and businesses. The Vivian is an iconic gallery situated in rural Matakana and featuring contemporary art from local and international artists. Got Laurie took over the Vivian just 12 months ago. And in this, our very first Junction film, he talks about his passion for art, some of the work exhibiting at the gallery, and his plans for what looks to be an interesting and exciting future. Having the gallery is a terrific privilege, and, but what a lot of people don't realise was I, my career started off in art. Um, after high school in Edinburgh, I went to the Edinburgh School of Art and studied there for four years as a, as in drawing and painting. And that was an honours degree, and once I got that, I then did a Master of Philosophy uh, at the same art college. It's now owned by Edinburgh University. Um, shortly afterwards, one of my friends got a job in an advertising agency, like many art students are left without a job, and he said, come along, and they're looking for people, and uh, I went along, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and the advertising, to me, was this terrific way of taking complex messages and turning them into something really simple, and uh, took to it like a duck to water. As a career, it took me around the world. Um, in Edinburgh, then to Glasgow, then to London, then to Sydney, and then finally to New Zealand. And I love this country so much, I decided to stay here. So I've lived in the area for about four years. Uh, I live on a hill overlooking Packery Beach. Uh, many people know that house, of course, because it was on Grand Designs New Zealand um, in the first series. And many people saw how, um, how determined I was to finish that house. I've only had the Vivian for one year. I took it over uh, on August the 1st last year from Helen and the team who did a terrific job over the preceding five years to get the gallery up and running and really establish it as a destination in Matacana. I guess a big part of that was I wanted to take it to the next level and that was an important part of the rebrand, hence the old logo and the new logo. Um, and we've achieved a lot in one year um, from what the gallery, from, from the great foundations that it was built on. I think we've taken it uh, even further and really pushed it as a place to visit, not just when you come to Matacana, but f with people from Auckland uh, looking for a genuinely unique art experience. One of the interesting things about having wearing two hats in a business like this and having an arts background and a marketing background is you realise the importance of both in running a gallery. And uh, one of the most interesting things about the, Mat the Matakana region and the towns that surround it is it's a terrific community, although it's very disparate. And things like the Junction are very good um, for us, not just in terms of advertising, but in terms of spreading the word uh, around the community. The community support for the gallery has been absolutely rock solid. Just about on every opening, somebody will come to the table with some form of help for us. And it seems to be working. You know, in the last show, uh, the Fiona Pardington show, we had 220 people turn up, many of them locals. And it was quite an extraordinary event because the community support was extraordinary. For example, the Sawmill Brewery, um, who are our sponsors and are terrific sponsors of the arts actually, uh, really came to the table to make sure we didn't run out of beer we had local wine sponsors, we had half price pizzas from the Rusty Pelican, we had Tom's Oysters, he donated 100 oysters. It really was a, a special event. Lots of people in the community came round to help, to make sure we had a brazier outside, uh, to help with the parking. It was pretty awesome. So this particular show was important. It's very significant work. Fiona Partington is probably one of the top photographers in the country if not one of our most important artists. And this is a body of work she started last year using glass cullets, which is um, a sort of um, a, a byproduct of a marble making factory 
in America. She collects these little objects, these little treasures, and she places them on top of existing photographs that she owns or old negatives or daguerreotypes or tintypes um, that she uses to place these glass colours on top of and then reshoots the whole thing. To me, it's an incredible departure from where she's been before in her practice. And having a show like this at the Vivian and in Matacana is extremely significant. Um, this, could, this show could travel anywhere in the world and it would still be as important for us to show it first was terrifically exciting. So we also invited Nathan and Jamie Haynes, Mr and Mrs Haynes, to come up and play a DJ set. And what they actually did was compose a set um, around each of the images in the room. So we actually got a performance within a show on the opening night. And that went down a storm. It was fantastic and really well received. And, uh, they really enjoyed coming up to Matakana and they said they will come back again so I'm going to hold them to that and we're going to do something in the summer with them as an event. Vicky Fanning is uh, uh, another local artist who we're really proud to support. Vicky has shown over the years in the Vivian but this time we asked her to do a specific body of work in the studio gallery. The studio gallery is a lovely little annex of the main north gallery, a terrific space for artists to show their work in. And what she came up with was gobsmacking. She came up with three individual pieces, um, borosilicate glass, uh, silicon and clay, and made these beautiful, um, beautiful models, kind of biomorphic almost, on these incredible, incredibly designed plinths. The Vivian had a good reputation for supporting local artists. And that's still important to the Vivian. That's still an, a very important part of what we do. But I, I always felt confident that we could bring in significant international artists into this space. The space deserves it. And that's why we've shown people like Patricia Piccinini. We have Sally Gabori in here. Uh, we've shown Dale Frank in here. They, these, are, these are significant artists with a major international presence, so it's a real thrill to have them in our little gallery at the heart of our community. And closer to home, of course, we have um, relatively local artists like Ian Cheeseman. We commissioned Ian to do his first major large-scale steel sculpture, which, of course, everyone can't miss when they park their car in the car park because it confronts them with the word idiots. Um, and that's had terrific traction. Uh, so much interest, that actually, that he had to make very small-scale models of that one so people could take uh, their idiots home with them. Um, Ian has a major solo show coming up in October this year, so we're looking forward to that. And then there's artists like Aaron Scythe, who, again, um, Kiwis, he was in Japan, he's a Kiwi, he was in Japan for 16 years. He trained under, in Japanese pottery. He knows it inside out was a blockbuster actually for both of us that, that's done very, very well. And we're going to have another show at Christmas of Aaron's work, that beautiful sort of ja traditional Japanese meets very untraditional sort of hip hop Kiwi ingenuity on the potter's wheel mostly. Uh, one of the highlights in the show calendar this year was to tie in with 125 years of women's suffrage. That show was called Never an Answer and it featured 12 abstract painters, all of whom happened to be women. Um, Linda Tyler and Lucinda Bennett curated that show for us. And the quote, never an answer, comes from the painter Laura Owens, who, when asked why she chose to, to be an artist, she says, because there's always a question and never an answer. And as an abstract show, you're never quite sure how abstract work is going to go down. Um, but as an abstract show, it was, it was held in such high regard from everyone who visited it. Um, we were terrifically proud of that. Uh, you know, I always say to people, it wasn't the fact it was a women's show, it was a kick-ass painting show that just happened to be by women at different stages in their career. I guess, you know, Mat Matican has always had, this region has always had um, a good reputation for the arts and what I wanted to do was build on that and, and crystallise some of that and really bring Auckland up to the region. But one of the ways to do that of course was taking us to Auckland, uh, particularly for the Auckland Art Fair earlier this year. 
and it was a resounding success for the gallery. We we had um, we were there for four or five days, uh, Ian Cheeseman and I, and we would have had over 1,500 people come into that booth. Um, and we welcomed them the same way we welcomed them into the gallery. Many people had never heard of the Vivian before, and a few people, actually probably about 30%, had never been to Matacana. And one of the ongoing, uh, one of the more delightful aspects of going to the Auckland Art Fair has been the number of visitors who now come up to this region from Auckland to visit the Vivian. And that was a bit rarer before. Now we have carloads on a Saturday come up to see us here which is really exciting. Uh, collaboration in my business life has always been super important. You know, you, you can't do everything on your own. And we, uh, I, I try and bring that into the art world as well. Collaboration is, is the only way I can really get things done is to collaborate with others, uh, particularly in the art scene and sometimes with locals. For example, at Brick Bay, we have a really strong affiliation with um, we both get together, we both punch above our weight as it stands. But for something like Auckland Art Week, we work together to ensure that anyone coming up could have an experience at Brick Bay, and then an hour later, come and do something at the Vivian. So we do work closely and collaboratively with other arts organisations. So that's, that, that's just a win-win for everyone, really. On a more local level, something like Creative Matacana is something we're incredibly proud to be in involved with. Uh, last year we, we launched the reception here and this year we will, um, which will be 2019, early 2019 in May, um, we will launch a series of events that tie in with Creative Matacana um, to really start to put it on the arts map all year round as opposed to just shows in a show calendar. Um, that's attended um, usually most of the courses sell it every year and what we're going to do this year is add different layers of that experience so there will be talks here, there will be events in the gallery as well as a sort of creative hub for that experience. When, when we launched the Vivian, you know, the brand promise was to be a destination for discovery and it's only been 12 months or so since I've taken over the gallery and I think we've managed to do that. We really have put the Vivian um, on the arts map and as a result of that, I think we've put this whole area, um, helped the area become a destination for people to come to and experience something new every time they come to it. Um, we have nine shows a year, we'll continue to do that. We're looking to put sculpture on the grounds. Um, it's, it's become above and beyond my expectations and I think we've taken it from a regional gallery experience to a genuinely unique New Zealand gallery experience. Um, which I think you could be proud to take anywhere in the world. This is an area, this whole region, um, the whole Rodney district, is becoming, you know, from Wellsford to Lee to Matakana to Pakari, is, is just becoming a hotbed of excitement at the moment. There's so much going on in these communities, you know, often dismissed as rural, and yet I can tell you there's a lot more happening up here through the year and in the next 10 years or so this is going to be an area that's really going to develop and grow and boom and I'm really excited to be a part of that. Anthony Morris is an artist who is who turns 80 this year, who has just turned 80 this year and we're offering him a show um, and it will be the first time he's ever been shown uh, in, in an exhibition, as a solo exhibition in an art gallery. It's very exciting for us. He's a lovely man. What, what, one of the aspects that people may not know about Anthony's work is, you know, he's famous for setting up Morris and James with his wife in the 1970s, re really putting Matican. That was the very start of Matacana's development as a, 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 as a place for the arts, to be perfectly honest. But of course, Morris and James were, is largely a commercial pottery. You know, you can go there and buy um, really beautiful things. But what this show focuses on is Ant's private practice. This is his own artistic work, all the stuff that he made with his bare hands, um, sometimes with a wee bit of help, often experimental work, and often work that was influenced by his travels overseas. So it's a major show. There's probably 30 or 40 pieces. You'll never see them in this entirety again. Um, uh, in the way that we're putting the show together. 
uh, because we've dug them out of sheds and huts and uncovered things in bushes in his garden. And it's going to be terrific celebration, not just of the man and his work, but again, of the area. Many of these pots are made from Matacana clay. And there's something really beautiful about hosting a show here um, of an artist of that caliber, literally using material that came from the ground that this gallery is situated on. Ant Morris has been making, creating for over 50 years. And although he's known for his pottery, he, he's an outstanding glass artist as well, uh, and also a painter. He still paints. When we visited his studio recently, um, he was still painting and his, his output is incredible. He still paints every single day. So what you'll see is a cross section of his work um, and he's still working today. Ant is one of the hardest working artists that we know. So what's coming up? Well, after Ant's show, we have Ian Cheeseman's major solo show at the end of October. After that, we have the Summer Show, which is a two-month celebration of local and international artists um, presenting a huge body of work across the whole gallery. And that will take us into the new year. And I hope to get a holiday at some point.